Where does the book of Judges come? Chronologically, what's happened? Genesis covers 2,500 years, right? That's from creation to who? What's the last thing in the book of Genesis? Where's the book of Genesis end? Anybody, if somebody says the last chapter, that's not a good answer, okay? <laughs> Who's the character in the book of Genesis? Is Adam in Genesis? What about Noah? What about Abraham? What about Isaac? What about Jacob? What about Joseph? You know the last thing in the book of Genesis? Death of Joseph, 2,500 years. Book of Exodus. And takes Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Now, mark out just that, or, or leave out those first 80 years of the life of Moses. It's not that they're unimportant, but you've got 2,500 years of Bible history in, in the book of Genesis, and you've got 120 if you start with the birth of Moses. We know very little about the first 40 years of the life of Moses, one or two chapters. And then the next 40 years, he's over there taking sheep, and, and, and we two more chapters devoted to that. And so you start in, in uh, uh, the call of Moses in, in about, well, it's really in chapters 3 and 4 of the book of Exodus. And from there, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy cover 40 years. So you got one book of the Bible that covers 2,500 years and Exodus through Deuteronomy, the life of Moses. 120 years he lives, but we know so little about the first 80 years of his life. That in and of itself is fascinating. But you remember the threefold promise God made? The word great, I'll make of, to Abraham, I'll make of you what? A great what? Great nation. Put you where? Great land, and then I will someday send great Savior. Now then, we are ready to enter, ready to talk about the fact that that, that became a great nation. Seventy souls went down into the land of Egypt. They are 430 years to the exact same day. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 40 said that from the time they went into Egypt, it was exactly the anniversary 430 years later that they came out of the land of Egypt. I love that. I love that verse to that very same day. I love to think chronologically when I, when I think about the Old Testament. Now then, Moses dies at the end of the book of Deuteronomy. Who takes Moses' place? Joshua. Joshua takes, what's Joshua's life all about? Well, he's back over there in, uh, in Numbers. He's, he's obviously there in, uh, you've mentioned in Exodus and Numbers and, uh, and Deuteronomy. There he is. But Joshua's work is what? Conquering what? Conquering that land. There were 31 kings that they conquered. Sometimes we do not understand the magnitude of what they did took over 31 kingdoms. How many kingdoms are there in Europe? Give you some, some comparable understanding of it. And I know those kingdoms in, the, in Canaan were not as massive as the other, but they were distinct, powerful kings with, king, with soldiers and everything, and they destroyed 31 of those kings. How long does the book of Joshua cover? How long did it take them to take the promised land? Anybody know? Some, somewhere between six and eight, what would you guess? Good. Somewhere between six and eight is seven, all right? Now then, Joshua dies, and that's where we finished last week. What happens after Joshua dies? They're in the promised land. What's the next major event? They've got to have some kind of government. Moses was there, and there were those helpers of Moses. Joshua was there, and there might have been others helping him. But once they get into that land, they've got to have some sort of government. And so God raised up judges. These judges were also deliverers. But their work described as judges. How many judges were there? That's on the card there. How many judges were there? Some, somewhere between 14 and 16. Anybody got a guess? Oh, 15. There were 15 judges. I want to introduce to you, uh, if, if your Bible does not have uh, the, the divisions by topics, pick up, the, pick up the Pew Bible. I want us to look at the book of, uh, of, of Judges. Here, here's what's going to happen. 
you, you open up to Judges chapter 1 and uh, you read about the continued conquest of Canaan. You got that? Judges chapter 1. Also in chapter 1 is the incomplete conquest of the land. We'll come back to that if we have time. And then uh, uh, look at the beginning of chapter 3, the nations uh, uh, remaining in the land. And then all of a sudden, look in chapter 3, verse 7. What do you have the heading in chapter 3, verse 7? <laughs> have a heading in your Bible? What do you have there? Othniel. How many verses are devoted to Othniel? Chapter 7 uh, I mean, chapter 3, verse 7 through, how many verses is that? Five verses. That's all we know about Othniel. Now, there are 15 judges. And if we're not careful, we'll think, well, we know everything about all these judges. We know nothing about all of these judges. Who, who is the next king or the next judge? Look, look uh, between verse 11 and 12. Who's the next judge? Ehud, all right. You get to the end of Ehud. Even before you get to the end of that chapter, we've got one chapter to tell us about Ehud. Look at Shamgar. How much do you know about one of these judges? One verse. One verse. Now then, you've got two, or two, two chapters that are devoted to, uh, uh, to Deborah. Get over to chapter 6, and then you get, to, you know, two and a half chapters devoted to Deborah. But remember, Shamgar only got one verse. And, uh, and then you've got, uh, you've got the story about Gideon. And that, that is that story. We may spend time discussing some of these as we, sur as we sur survey this. After Gideon, you've got the death of Gideon over in chapter 8. In, in chapter 9, you get to the, to the next judge, and that's Abimelech. That's, uh, that's Gideon's son. Chapters 9 and 10 are, are important. Look, look when you get to chapter 10. After Abimelech, how much time does Tola get in this book? <laughs> he gets one verse. What about Jer? How many verses does he get? He gets two verses, right? Uh, Israel is, is oppressed again. And then you've got Jephthah. You remember the vow that, that Jephthah made? Uh, but when you get out of Jephthah, look in chapter 12 in, the, uh, in verse 8. Look, look, you see three names in chapter, the heading in chapter 8, Ibzan, Elon, Abdon. How many verses does Ibzan get? He gets three verses, right? After him, verse 11, is uh, Elon. How many verses does Elon get? He gets two verses. What about um, uh, Abdon? How many verses does he get? He gets, and, and, and that's the book of Judges. Now then, the rest of the, this book is about Samuel and Samson and Eli. In the biblical order, Samson, Eli, and, uh, uh, and, and, and Samuel. But it's really the next chapter before you get to Eli and Samuel. So here we have a book that covers <coughs> about, uh, you know, over 300 years. I think that's the answer on the card. How, how, many, how many years does the period of the judges cover? About... Three, oh, or over 300 years. Somewhere, you know, a good number in my mind is, is, is the number 400. Uh, anyway, that's what the book of Judges covers. Now, what should we expect to happen? They're in the land. They're told to go in and to conquer the land, and they spend the time trying to conquer the land, but they do not listen to God. Go back, go back to chapter 1. And, and look at that section that talks about the fact that they, that they did not drive out all of, all, all of, all, all of the people uh, in that land. Chapter 1 says, uh, uh, describing what happened, it's down chapter 1 about verse 7 says, And Judah went with his brother Simeon, and they attacked the Canaanites who inhabited Zephyr and utterly destroyed it. My, oh my, it's great, isn't it? Now, when you get to uh, uh, the, look in verse 27. However, Manasseh did not drive out the inhabitants of Bessier to the village and all of the names of these villages and the inhabitants of that. Uh, look in verse 29. Nor did Ephraim drive out all the Canaanite nations. Verse 37. Nor did Zebulun. Verse, 30, uh, verse 31. Nor did Asher. Uh, 
and uh, uh, verse 33, nor did Naphtali. And, and so what you have is they've come into the promised land. Is God with them? Yes. God is with them, but they have failed to drive out these nations. What were they told to do? You go in and you destroy the nations. You burn down or burn up, melt down all of their idols. You cut down every grove of trees where there was ever an idol. And you never, you never speak the name of that God again. You ever look on Facebook and see those things from 50 years ago? What is this? Did you ever see one of these and everything? Do you know how difficult it is for your children and grandchildren to figure out what those are? Yeah, I remember we used to have one of those, any, any one of those. And, 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 uh, and Jerry Pittman just did this, you know. A rotary phone, isn't that amazing? Have you guys ever phoned anybody on a rotary dial phone? Ever, you have? That's, you're from Texas, I'm sorry. You know, they, they'll catch up one of these days. But uh, a rotary dial, no, nobody knows what it is. There's something on Facebook of some, they gave two, two indiv individuals, I think they were New Zealanders, and gave them an hour to figure out how to ro use a rotary dial to call anybody. It was fascinatingly funny. But you see, if I talk about a rotary dial phone, what's that? You know? Do you recognize that your children will not know what a flip-top phone is? They will never have seen one. Do, none of you have one. I mean, I, I just want you to understand. Now then, suppose, suppose you never hear the name of a pagan god. Suppose they had gone to this promised land and had destroyed every person or every worshiper of that god. That's what he said, do. You go in and you wipe them all out. What else you wipe out? You wipe out every remembrance of them. But they didn't do it. They did not do this. Look in chapter 2, verse 3. The Lord says, Because you did not do this, uh, therefore, he said, I will not drive them out before you. They shall be thorns in your sides, and their God shall be a snare to you. You want a commentary on the book of Judges? Here it is. They failed to do what God told them to do, and these were going to be a thorn in your side. You might just file that away in your mind, put it on a three by five card, and put it in the back of your head the next time you think about Paul's thorn in the flesh. These shall be a thorn in your sides. Old Testament expression. It's not just something that sort of pops up in the New Testament. It's an Old Testament expression. And in the context in the Old Testament, it had to do with the nations that were around. Uh, well, that, that, that's over in 2 Corinthians. But don't want to chase that rabbit. But you, you need to understand. You need to understand. Thorn in the flesh, thorn in your sides is not a New Testament. We treat it as though we've never heard of it because likely we have not. These nations are going to be a thorn in your side. And were they ever. In fact, the Lord says, uh, verse, verse uh, 23 of that, for therefore the Lord left those nations without driving them out immediately, nor did he deliver them into the hands of Joshua. They failed to do what God said. Let me show you the saddest verse in the book of Judges. Chapter 1, or pardon me, chapter 2, verse 7. So the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord which he had done for Israel. Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of God, died when he was 110 years old, and they buried him. Look, verse 10. When all that generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the works which, they had, uh, which the Lord had done. How close is Palm Beach Lakes from not existing? Isn't that amazing? Palm Beach Lakes exist not because of 
th those who are here, those older members are here. <coughs> Palm Beach Lakes existed because 98 years ago, I think that's what you said, David, 98 years ago there were some people who said, we're going to build a New Testament church there. And thank God for the leadership that this church has had over all of those years that continually call us back to the Word and talk about the importance of the Word and studying the Bible and have Bible classes to teach us the Bible, to ground us in the faith and to give us an understanding of all of this because if one generation, young people, this church has passed to you the torch of the destiny of your generation of the church. That's sobering. You cannot even begin to grasp fully the importance of what has just been said. But it's up to you to have your own faith and believe it in your heart with all of your heart. I'm going to live by that until the very day that I die. That's why this study of the Old Testament is so important. That's why we're trying to do, we're trying to do what God uh, what, what the God of heaven says. The Bible talks about the fact that uh, uh, they forgot about God in one generation. That's the story of the book of Judges. Imagine the hands on the face of the clock. Visualization of the book of Judges. It's noon, it's 12 o'clock. The nation of Israel is faithful to God, to God. The clock runs over till three o'clock in the afternoon. They begin to worship idols. Faithful to God, worshiping idols. Six o'clock. God allows pagan nations to come in and afflict them. That's the consequence of disobedience. Nine o'clock, they repent and God raises up a judge and they serve the Lord all the days of that judge. That judge dies. It's noon again. What happens? Three o'clock, on the face of the clock, they turn to idols. God allows the nation. They repent. The Lord raises up, judges, delivers, and they're faithful to God. But the Bible says every time they got to 12 o'clock, they were worse than they were before that time. I want you to hear that. 400 years of the period of the judges. And for 400 years, every time, visually, it's 12 o'clock. They're worse than they were the last time it was 12 o'clock. When one generation leaves the kingdom of God, the next generation does not have the starting place. And that's the importance of us instilling within the hearts of our children and our grandchildren and all those that we love so much. Faith in God. Because you young people are at a church like I grew up in. Knew the Bible, studied the Bible, great Bible teachers. And that's why I stand here this day. But the importance of what I'm trying to say is we've tried with your generation to build your faith. We've challenged you, we've brought speakers in and everything to try to help you live right and do right. Thank God. Thank God for our elders who place the vital importance they place on our young people. But parents, it's up to you. If you leave up to the church the total teaching of your children, you perhaps will find yourself in the place of those who have children who have not been coming because of covid it's been a year in some homes, perhaps, 
since those children have had any Bible study. That's why God did not give young people to the church. He gave young people to mamas and daddies. And thank God for the parents that you've had. That's it for tonight. We'll get and look at the, the more in detail the story of Judge, the book of Judges next week.